Hi, welcome back to APEA Dog Grooming. Today we are grooming this very lovely doggy and her name is Cheeky. Make sure to hit that thumbs up on the video and subscribe to my channel if you like what you're watching. Cheeky is very whiny and she is just in for a bath and a light trim today. So let's start bathing. We are using our biodegradable shampoo. It is also flea repellent and it also has aloe vera in it. So she has some sort of like allergies or some yeast growing on her paws. So make sure to get that nice and soapy so that we can get her a nice clean rubber dub scrub in the tub. Chiki was adopted by her owners about two years ago and she has severe um, anxiety, like separation anxiety. So that's what the owner told me and that's why she complains a lot. She is not aggressive in any way. She just doesn't like getting her nails um, done. So when I am trimming her nails, I will be using a muzzle. But for the rest, she is a very good dog. Putting aside the whining, of course, because as you will see in this video, I will leave some of the audio in it. And most of the time, she's whining. So let's soak those eye boogers. I'm gonna get my small comb and just comb those boogers out. I hate eye boogers, I really do. Those were pretty decent, but I've seen some eye boogers that are just humongous and harvest so many moisture and bacteria and all of that. And I don't like that it's so close to their eyes. It can cause, you know, severe health issues so I like to trim nice and close near the eyes so that um, they grow less humongously so I'm using my rubber brush today in the bath so that we can get a thorough cleaning so if you don't really appreciate her complaining the whole time because she is going to complain the whole video um, all through the video make sure to hit your mute button on your screen you don't have to mute your whole phone you just have to put mute on the screen So the owner told me that Chiki is going to get um, spayed this week. So we are giving her a nice bath before the surgery. Because, well, after the surgery, she won't be able to come in until, I don't know, how long. Because I've never had female dogs. So <laughs> all my dogs are male. They just... I don't know why, they just, um, when we adopted them, they, they just all turned out to be male, so. Anyway, so we are now towel drying, we've already rinsed her, and we are towel drying, and she doesn't have a lot of hair, she is quite, um, She's actually, she actually has some bald spots, I will show you um, further in the video, but the owner says that the reason for that is hormones, and that's why she's getting spayed, 
is because of hormones her hair falls out so we did use before the um, oatmeal shampoo but now we are trying out this all natural aloe vera biodegradable by the way shampoo So I always do try to keep a leash on her because she will jump off the tub if I let her um, just be. Um, it actually can be very dangerous if you don't keep an eye out on your client because, well, she's a, a medium sort of dog. But if a small dog would just leap off the tub, they can actually, um, you know, get hurt. Make sure to always use ear protection when using your dryer. I'm not going to use my force dry on her because, well, she doesn't have a lot of hair and um, we're not in a rush. So, And she's anxious anyway, so why would I put her through that? So yeah, always wear protection for your ears when blow drying. So I'm using my slicker brush so that I can separate the hair, but I'm using a very, very light touch. I will show you further in the video um, how the skin actually gets um, scratched up if you use too hard of a hand. So you can easily see right there that she has some bald spots. So I don't want to, you know, brush that part with a slicker brush. And she's trying to run away from the dryer, so I have to hook her up just so she will stay more put in place. And I am using my handy dandy uh, dryer stand that I made myself, by the way, um, so that I can have both hands free, one for handling her or, you know, grabbing the hair that I need to brush and the other one for the actual brush. So here what I'm trying to show you is that if you brush too hard on a dog, its skin will get scratched up. You can easily see that on the palm of my hand and, you know, um, you just don't want to do that to a dog. Especially if uh, it has really sparse hair because when you brush other dogs, since they have so much hair, it usually, the slicker brush doesn't get all the way into the skin unless you use, you know, uh, quite amount of pressure. But on her, I'm using a very, very light hand. And on the head, I'm just trying to make it nice and poofy so that we can give her a cute cut. So the other day, I was watching these um, show dog groomers and one of them actually recommended to use um, apple cider vinegar on yeasty feet and you know I think that's really 
a really nice tip because since we are not uh, vets, we are only groomers, we are not um, supposed to give, you know, some kind of medicated um, treatment to a dog because, well, we don't, we don't know what we're doing. So, um, apple, vi apple cider vinegar seems like a very natural, very um, safe option to use with itchy feet. So the next time I see her, I will make sure to have in a spray bottle some apple cider vinegar and just spray it on there while I'm blow drying her so that, um, you know, all that, all those enzymes can stop itching her and then she, you know, bites and licks and, you know, just harvests more yeast and it's a, it's like a cycle, you know, so... Yeah, that's for her next room. I really hope her hair sparseness situation, um, you know, improves after the surgery because she would look lovely, all nice and poofy all around. So the owner didn't want a haircut per se to be done, but you know, you always have to trim up here and there, make her look like she's been to the groomers. You always have to, you know, do a nice center trim, you know, clean out those ears, clean off all of those eye boogers and just trim up the ears and all of that. Just those little extra touches that look um, like the dog has been to the actual groomers. So I just wanted to mention that my videos take up at least at least two to three days to upload. So sorry if you've been waiting for another video, but um, I don't get clients every single day. You know, it's been pretty rough out here. So um, when I do get clients, I tape them. Sorry, not tape. Oh my god, I'm so old. I record them. You know, we used to say videotape them. Anyway, I record them and, um, you know, it doesn't upload in that same day as I edit it. You know, it takes two to three days if the video is about half an hour to 40 minutes long. So if the video is longer, I've had videos that if they were longer than maybe in... I don't know, 45 minutes. I've had videos that take more than a week to upload, so that can be frustrating. <laughs> and then on some days, I have more than one client in a day, but my battery only lasts 
for about you know about one one dog so yeah I, I can't you know record the the other dogs I have in that day because well my battery's dead and yeah I have been thinking of getting another battery so that I have two and I can charge them all night and then you know have a spare battery and then while that one is in use I can start charging the other one and you know switch them out like that but um, with how things are I'm thinking I'm not gonna get that until I get monetized on this channel so um, it just makes more sense to me you know Alright, so here comes the nail trim. I do put a muzzle on her because, uh, like I said, she doesn't like getting her nails done. And there will be a little uh, clip there where you can see she tries to snap at me. But, you know, she's wearing a muzzle. There's no big deal. I'm just glad she had it on. Oh, and what I'm reaching for in there is my quick stop. It's just in case I nick her little vein. So I like to have it on hand if I ever need it. And if I don't, I'll just put it back in its place. So having it close to me while doing this part just, um, you know, it... It relieves that stress of, oh my god, oh my god, I made her bleed, I need to find it, and you know, scramble through everything to find it. Um, I'll just leave it there, unscrew it, and if I didn't need it, then I'll just screw it back on, the lid back on, and just put it where it was. So I left the audio here a little bit, so you can still hear um, her whining, but... I've put it on a low volume because of the dryer. Some of you, I guess, will find it annoying that she whines and complains a lot, but <laughs> in reality, it was actually quite funny. <laughs> Not because she was feeling stressed and I'm, you know, laughing at her feelings or anything like that. It's just that, well, she had nothing really to complain about. I wasn't harming her. I wasn't um, being rough on her. She really didn't have a reason to be whining. And <laughs> it just, just makes me, you know, giggle, I guess. I could actually hear her before they came in. She was, they were walking here. And I heard her <laughs> all the way from inside. So I was like, oh yeah, that's. That's cheeky, all right, and then they knocked us off. <laughs> yeah. So, as you can tell, I really enjoy my work. Um, you know, I was reading comments the other day, and a person said that um, she also worked with dogs, and it helped a lot to actually like what you're doing and like your clients and I completely agree with that I mean if you're not happy where you are where you work you're spending most of your day and most of your life um, you know doing what you do so I think it's very important for you to enjoy what you're doing and especially when you're working with animals I, I don't know what it is I, I guess I'm just soft-hearted <laughs> Because I, I like getting to know each dog, each personality. I like to know what their backstory is, what their future is. I like to know. I'm quite nosy, I guess. I like to, um, you know, get to know the dog. Not so much the person, and I'm not really a people person. Um, but it's just interesting to me what all these pets and 
what they mean to my clients and you know because my dogs are very important to me my cats are also very important to me so yeah I completely agree with you I don't remember what her username was but you know she said that that she you have to like your clients and I completely agree and I mean I'm not you know unrealis unrealistic about things I know sometimes um, not everything is fine and dandy there are difficult dogs out there and I do handle some of them but you know they have their story too there there's a reason why they're like that and if you um, if you are unreali unrealistic of a situation it doesn't make it go away yeah because well I say that because I see some dog grooming videos or channels out there that only show like the well-behaved the perfectly still um, cute dogs out there and yeah there are but most of them aren't like that and it's okay you know, not everything has to be, like I said, fine and dandy. It's okay to have an unruly dog or a dog who doesn't like getting, you know, their feet touched or doesn't like water. It's okay. Like, there's no stigma on that. It's completely normal. It's completely... Sometimes it's actually completely just a justified because of their background you know at least my clients my clients as you can tell are not like pedigree standard uh, dog breeds they're mostly mixes and on top of that you know most of them have been adopted they're not you know bred or brought, bought from a breeder most of them were just adopted and that comes with a whole bunch of you know insecurities and all sorts of things that well I guess we'll talk in some other video all right so now we are just cleaning out those paw pads I'm using a number 10 and um yeah, I've never tried using a shorter blade for a sanitary trim. I don't find it um, as recommendable because you can clipper burn a dog. If you have a lot of experience and, you know, are really sure of what you're doing, of course you can do that. Of course you can use whatever tools you want. But for me, I like to use a number 10. And even that sometimes causes um you know irritation it can uh leave some redness or you know and i really try to not use a heavy hand but it happens and that's okay i use uh oh my god she's complaining so much she's distracting me <laughs> um i use baby powder after a sanitary trim that way, um, if I did have too much of a heavy hand, the baby powder will just relieve some of that itchiness. Of course, use as little as you can. Not, uh, try not to, you know, to smother, dog, smother the dog in baby powder because you don't want the dog to ingest that if he or she licks. But just enough so that the skin... Um, isn't irritated. So I know that the vet is going to shave uh, her belly probably with a number 40 because that is a surgical blade but I just want to give her as much as a wide belly under sanitary cut I guess as wide as I can so that um, you know she the owner has an easier time cleaning her up or cleaning her wounds. I don't know what it takes, you know, after the spay. So, um, 
just want to facilitate both of their lives. Her ears were pretty clean. We didn't get, um, you, know, you know, a lot of dirt out, if any. But just wanted to go over it and make sure that her ear canal is nice and dry after. That's why I have the blow dryer on her. Although I did notice that her right ear is a lot more red than her left ear. So uh, I did clip out hair with a number 10 just so that it can, you know, vent easier and air can go in there and not cause an ear infection. She didn't, you know, show any signs of an ear infection, but uh, I just wanted to prevent anything. You always want to prevent and not cause. She comes in about every month, a month and a half uh, for grooming. So I don't know why she still complains. I mean, she's pretty used to me by now. But, um, you know, I think taking your dog to a groomer is really important also, not just for the appearance part, but because we actually look at your dog, um, you know, basically from the skin to the hair to the nails to the paw pads, the ears, the eyes, the underbelly. We really get a good look of your dog, so... Our, our appointments usually last longer than your normal, you know, vet checkup. So, um, we can tell if, we can tell the owner to take a dog to the vet if it is, if we see it necessary. Um, not because we have any medical training or anything, but we, we have an overall knowledge of what is normal and what is not. So I think it's really important because, well, we can notice things that weren't there before. Like if a lump has um, just come out of the blue since the last time we saw him or her, we will usually, well, we should tell the owner and be like, hey, you know what? We saw this lumber bump and it wasn't there the last time. So I would recommend you get that checked out. And not that the owner, you know, isn't paying enough attention attention that they wouldn't notice it but maybe it was in a hidden spot you know where you usually wouldn't pet a dog so since we do pretty much you know like invade their privacy pretty much in all aspects um you know we get a good look So I'm just cleaning up, making sure that no hair sticks out. Like I said, she didn't want a haircut, but we still have to, you know, make her look nice and tidy. And the feet are usually what gives it away that, um, the feet and the head, I think, and the tail, usually give it away that a uh, dog, you know, has been uh, to the groomers. So even though I have muted the video, um, she is still complaining. I don't know why. <laughs> When trimming the length of the hair on the tail, you always have to put um, your fingers on the tip of the actual tail. 
you never ever just want to cut it, you know, just randomly like that because you can cut the tail tip. So I like to just put my thumb over the tail tip and then I'll cut whatever is, you know, hanging out. So as I mentioned before, I'm using my clipper just to clear out some of the hair that is in front of the ear canal just so that it can vent a little bit better because um, they do, well, the, the right ear looks a little more pinkish to me. Alrighty, so for the head, I'm just going to brush everything forward using my slicker brush and my comb. Um, a comb is a great way to check if you have successfully uh, brushed up your dog. And a comb will always tell you if you missed a spot or anything because it will snag on the littlest of knots. So just combing and brushing everything forward and cutting that visor so that um, you know she can see and like I said earlier I like to get nice and tight underneath those uh, inner eye corners so that she has less of a chance of um, eye boogers the next time I see her so yeah I'm using my curved shears it just really helps with getting the right shape on that visor. And now with the same curved scissors, I'm just um, using them to help define the jawline. I like it when you can tell um, the difference between the, the face, the neck, and the body. I don't like it when it's like one whole piece. So I like to define that part. So I'm right-handed and I've been recently noticing that I scissor a lot more on the dog's left side because that's my right side on them than the dog's right side because that's my left side on them. So um, I will be definitely, definitely be working on that because you always want to look for evenness and the only way to achieve that is by whatever you do to the right side, you've got to repeat it on the left side. So, I, um, yeah, have to work on that. So, my own dogs get really ex upset when um, they hear other dogs, you know, cry and whimper so while I was editing this video they were like what are you doing to that poor dog <laughs> I can only imagine what she must be like 
whining all the time in her own house. She must whine for everything. When she wants food, when she wants water, when she wants hugs. Oh dear. Something I found myself doing recently is um, this part where I open their mouth and uh, just snip away any of that brown nasty hair that, you know, is right um, underneath their lip. I find it that that hair, they always try to lick into their mouth and it gets caught on their teeth and then, you know, it can cause a whole bunch of, um, you know, dental problems that they don't need. So we're just going to trim that off. Just be um, sure to be very careful when snipping around their muzzle because they can lick their lips and you can accidentally cut them. So make sure you have a firm grip on them. Not too extremely tight but just enough so that they don't try to lick and um, you know an accident can happen. You would never want that. That can be traumatizing for the dog and yourself as well.
Alright guys, so that's all for this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so for more content like this one. Um, I really do appreciate when you guys leave comments. It just lets me know what you would like to see in further videos. And um, she keeps distracting me with her whining. Um, yeah. Happy grooming and stay safe out there. I will be leaving some before and after pictures at the very end. So make sure to check those out. Bye!